This week, BBC Two has been showcasing the work of new documentary filmmakers in Picture This. This film by Stuart Mitchell, which contains strong language, follows the unpredictable ups and downs of Harry, compulsive gambler. So 15 hundred in total inside there, so we're three grand the lizard as well. I was up all night, I've been really ill, I've got a bug coming, it's just come straight through me, I haven't eaten for two and a half days. I had one sandwich and it nearly killed me, but I've, I've just about managed to do it for you. Are you, are you, ready? Are you ready to go now? I'll ring you back in two minutes. That's in there, he's ready. He's normally, he's a late sleeper, he normally sleeps in and that, but he's ready today. He's ready to go today, no mistaken. This is my best, right? 11.31, 6 versus 2, 11 away. 6 versus 3, 8 to 11. 2 versus 1, 11 away. 2 versus 4, 6 to 4. I can't change that one, can I? Definitely not. Right, 12.33, 6 versus 2, 4 to 7. 12.43, 4 to 7. Uh, 4 and 3, 4 to 7. 2 and 1, 10 to 11. 1 and 3, 4 to 6. Over to Crayford. 4 and 1, 8 to 13. 6 and 2, 7 to 4. Side bet, 6 to 5, nothing to do with the match. 4 and 5, 13 away. 5 and 1, 4 to 7, 3 and 4, 10 to 11, 4 and 3, 4 to 6, 6 and 4, 8 to 13, 5 and 1, 6 to 7, separate side, but nothing to do with the match, 7 and win 4. Yep. Keep your mobile on, Kelvin. Bye. Good luck. Kelvin. Gospel, A32, yeah? Up there, up there, up there, up there, up there, up there, up there. Right, yeah, we're just going to have the bridge now. You know that little slip road where the, where the trains go past? That's it, isn't it? So what a great start. We just get this next dodge on shot, Ben. Just get this next one up. This is it. This is where he's made the biggest, honestly, I think this is the biggest mistake he's ever made, right? The six is a lump of shit, but it, all one, two, three, four, and five are all leaders, and six is a pace this dog. It's a bit lame, but I think it will just go around the bend and run on, and I think two can't lead. And if two can't lead, it'll be nowhere. And I've got seven of all against, which means this is ten and a half hundred against my six, and I think I'm favourite. And I've got another 500 quid side bet with him, which doesn't count for the match because of the side bets, it's just a separate bet. 500 quid at six to five. So he makes two a big favourite to beat six, and I'll make six a big favourite to beat two. Yeah, I was wondering why, why he took his side yeah, this has got sugar in it. Well, I've never took sugar in my life, then. I haven't, I haven't, have I, ever? Go on, six, show your backside, please. Go on, then, keep wide, out of trouble. Go on, six, out of trouble, don't get knocked over. Nice and wide, nice and wide, only a go, six. Home you go. Stays all day. Two's a punch. Oh, I get chin five. Nah, five going in it. Let's two chins it. Oh, two has chinned it. Now one chin it and all. Go on, four. Go on, Carter. <laughs> you never know what you're going to do. You never know. Two had a chin in it. Did. Oh. Thirty to eight, Glenn. What a fucking difference that makes. Listen, I'll, I'll find you. Listen, I'll find you an 0898 number for hard luck stories if you like, Kelvin. I think well, I'll, I'll, I'll look for the yeah, papers and try. Yeah, <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, Kelvin. Kel Kel listen, mate. I'd run a big. I'd run a big match anyway, mate. It made no difference, did it? All right, mate. He's done half screen, Kelvin, isn't he? About his luck in that. I've done a monkey on the side. Okay. Twenty-five minutes. I've still lost on the morning. A few quid. But it wasn't not a catastrophe. What one's that then? Where you going that one? It's a little tiny bite, but it's a little tiny bit. You're going to this one. Mix and match. What was the curry like last night? Yeah, it's good. How are you, Phil? I'm not letting you get away with it. Uh, that might be a drink, so we'll pop in here, yeah? Hi, Stuart. Hi, Kelvin. Yeah, mate, it's bad enough losing to him without being filmed handing it over. How did I ever agree to this? First time this year, this is one of my chefs. It's all being counted. I've had a completely torture. Oh, Kelvin. Go, well played. I must admit, I think, unlike most gamblers, and Harry's the same, actually, 
tend to be quite a good loser and a bad winner, yeah. which is which is quite unusual for gamblers, I think. Yeah. Most gamblers, when they win, they're all false modesty. I was lucky, you were unlucky, never yeah. mind. When they lose, it's damn, you, I'm so, I was robbed, yeah. blah, blah, it's disgraceful. Whereas Harry and I, it's the other way around. If you win, you just crucify the other guy. That'll teach you, don't ever take me yeah, on again. That'll teach you that. He's right, he's right. And it's, the, it's right, the better way to be. It's the right way to be. It's yeah. the right way to be. We don't like bad losers. Listen, if you don't get money when you're winning, if you don't get the money when you when the ball's rolling for you, then how are you ever going to get money? So many gamblers I know that when they hit a bit of form, they always think, oh, I've got this, put a nail in That's a famous Yorkshire expression. Got mine, put a fucking nail in it. And it's the word, I mean, it's the most pathetic expression in gambling you'll ever hear. Because if the things are going your way, you're getting the lucky breaks, you're doing well, that is the time to charge on and get the money. Because yeah. when you're out of form, you won't get nothing. Because this game, when you're out of form, is mercenary. Today's the day, boys. Today's the day. Five losers on this beat. Today is the day. Ten grand on back of winner and walk out. Do it three times on. Do it three times on the trot, right? Fourth time, go and try and get your bet on. You know what the black would say to you? Fuck off. That's what it would say to you. It's cajolery, it's trickery, it's cajolery, it's jealousy and envy all rolled into one. That's gambling. Harry, Harry goes out of his way to make people feel that he's an idiot. Absolutely. If, if, if Harry's an idiot, he makes himself like I'm a mug punter. I bet novice changes on one of three. Obviously, he don't understand gambling. I'll bet this. I'll, I'll have a bet on everything that moves. And it suits him to, to make them think, you know, I'll have a monkey on that. It makes them think that he'll bet on anything and they'll think he's a million. We're just laying, laying, laying. They're laying the small stuff and all of a sudden, whenever all the major bets come through, they're just going to get smashed a bit. <coughs> Carpet, two. There's a winner here. He's won. Fair play. Yeah. Oh. Easy, uh, easy. Too yeah. good, long fella. He's fucking beat me at tennis. He's beat me at tennis. He's beat me at a and he's beat me at some boots. Fucking hell, long fella. Is it the first time you've seen me lose? Yeah, yeah. It's these fucking cameras, that's what it is. Maybe. It's my I, I have, you know what I think it is? I must think I'm camera shy. Yeah. I don't think so. Do you think I'm camera shy, Stuart? I mean, I pay attention and I've got myself organised and he doesn't do either of those things. And so I know what's going on and I know the prices in the screens and I've got accounts and I've got a checkbook and I pay on time and they pay me and it all works. 
And so to that extent, it works well because I'm I'm his bank manager. I have nanny and brain all in one. Uh, whereas he knows everybody and can talk and can chat people up and dig out the information and the prices and the bets, etc. To that extent, we 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 mix quite well. Only one stands for living in London. It's just a fucking joke. Okay. In Twenty minutes. I'm still on Oxford Street waiting for a fucking cab. And what are you doing? I mean, I just don't understand it. Right, I'd rather, I rather, honestly, couldn't live in London. All the money in the fucking world. I'll tell you for fucking killing me. I've had to cancel the appointment. You want to shut the door, please? No, but I know what I've got. All fucking weekend, not enjoying the fucking food. Fucking taxes on fucking aliens. It's like having a child, it's just totally demanding looking after him and trying to make sure he doesn't ruin us all. White colour and the dust after. And I'll make a statement now. If this gets beat, I'll be very, 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 very surprised. Fucking hell, this doesn't know his job, does it? This will fucking win. This fucking will win. Don't worry, get your fucking camera on this bath. We won't dig this out. Fucking hell, it stays furthest now. Even think it'll stay. How can it get beat? Looking fairly happy, isn't fairly happy. Uh, we'll See you later, Mr. Noseband. <laughs> fucking hell, no, this will win. Yeah, well, all right. Get on with it, you fucking idiot. Go on, Dust Dancer. With four in front. Go on, Dust Dancer. Dust, dust Dancer's pissed up. Go on, Dust Dancer. Go on, Dust Dancer. It's pissed up. Go on, Dust Dancer. Don't worry about that. Fucking no. Where's the kind man has got no confidence? See? Fucking you are completely barking mad. It ran on strongly to get his head in front of yeah. him with by a long neck. Pissed up, Snowy. You get fucking paid, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Up until the age of 15, I thought everyone had enough money to live. Everyone went to work as a nurse or as a doctor. Everyone got enough money to live. Have a house. I'd gone on twice a year. I didn't realise that people got paid. Fuck all. And then when I did with this, I was about to have my dad and my mum and I remember being at school last year, school was in the work, and going, well, they've got fucking bums left at the end of every week. And I just, I just couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to leave school, get a bad carpet week and go and crack away. I thought, this is, you go to school, it's as boring as hell. Well, I enjoyed the school life. I thought, when you get out, you get a job, you get dough, but you don't get dough. Get parked up with the reddies. I just knew straight away that you were looking at you were going in to work at nine o'clock and praying all the matters and it was four o'clock when you walk when you walk through the door. So effectively you just wanted to set fire to the great parts of your life. How did you meet Harry? Um in the restaurant that I was working in. Uh, the hotel he was staying at for the snooker in Sheffield. And he drove me mad. He took me and my friend down to Wembley to watch his dog Chiquita Banana his ground. She won. She broke the track record. And me and my friend were stood at the um, winning line at the bottom, and he was stood right up at the top, top steps there. And all of a sudden, when she crossed the line, there was this mega, mega noise, like somebody was screaming and going mad. And we turned around, me and my friend, and it was him. And I went, Oh my God, what have I done? What am I doing? And he was running downstairs, jumping and shouting and going absolutely wild, shouting at everybody. And I just thought, Oh no, I knew I shouldn't have done this. <laughs> parents were a bit, you know, against it at first and my dad thought that he'd um, lose me at a game of cards and things like that because they didn't understand it at the time, you know, it was just like he's a gambler and, you know, he thought they thought that he was going to put me up as, you know, a stake or whatever. <laughs> people had actually seen um, what we were doing in terms of the five star hotels. All they knew were we were going away on holidays to all these exotic places and things like that. But um, it would have been a lot worse for them to come to terms with if they'd have seen, actually seen, you know, what we were, how we were living life. This is uh, me in Amsterdam, me and Kay in Amsterdam. Kay, what about this one? This is behind the goal when uh, Ajax played Torino. 
in Amsterdam, we were there in Holland. Kay was six months pregnant, and we had everything we had, £40,000, all we had in the great story, this is all we had in the world on Torino to win the UEFA Cup, uh, not Ajax to win the UEFA Cup, because they threw the first leg two all in uh, Turin against uh, Torino, and all they had to do at home was either win the game, draw nil nil or one all to win the Cup, and they were two to one on, you could put 10,000 on to win five, and it should have been 10,000 on to win about three. So it was a tremendous bet, so I decided to go all in. So there we are, behind the goal, cheering on Ajax, and it was nil-nil, and Torino hit the bar five minutes to go, which would have won the game for him. And literally, we just moved into the flat, we had every penny we got, and Jake and Kay was about seven months pregnant when that was taken. And um, what the most important night of my gambling life. What? Do you want to come to Rome in Italy? Where Where's Rome? You know where Rome is, Rome's near Sorrento. That's, the, that's Naples where we get off the plane. There's the coast down there. There's a boot, Italy, isn't it? You know it's a boot, don't you? Yeah. Like that. When you go to Rome, you go across there to Rome. And then we go dog racing, north racing. And then we go up to there and watch the football. And then we come back to Sheffield and go up with Jaylee and take you to the pictures and watch race. And yeah. Then we have a hamburger in there. <laughs> that's what we do anyway. All right. He's going to try and lead, isn't he, Cleek? Well, who's the other front runner in the race? Who's the other front runner? Is that second favourite as well? Is that second favourite as well? See you later, mate. This is it. This is absolutely massive. I swore I wouldn't do a lump on like this, but he said it would definitely win. There you go, they both jumped in really well. Nancy's now blinking for the first time and slightly awkward on the outside, just about the back line. These are the two, they're both back lines and they're together. They're clear of Nancy's now. Yeah, the red one with the nose bend. A little shepherd, a couple of legs clear of two and a half. Then where did they place up on the outside? If this gets beat, there's no more horse bets. No, I just said I'll give up. I'll give up the link to the dark. I'm stood for this massive. This will kill me. It's absolutely meant. This will be tortured for me if this gets beat. What do you think in running? Yeah, Glenn thought he might tuck in behind it. See you later. Terrible jump. Very quick over that. Extends the advantage to about five or six lengths over Sure and Armworthy memories. Good jump, Jake. Sure and Arm, Little Shepherd, not between them as they come to the third last. They're well clear of where the memories are. Come on, Good jump, please. You jumped all the way around. Little Shepherd on the inside, Go on, Jason. Jason. on the outside. Go on, Jason. Go on, Jason. Go on, sure enough. Just two good hurdles, sure enough. Perfect. Go on, sure enough. Keep him going, Jason. Other one's coming back. You're going better, though. Go on, Jason. Good jump. Go on, sure enough. Go on, Jason. Go on, Jason. Go on, Jason. Go on, Jason. Ride him out, son. Go on, Jason. Oh, that was such a big one. Oh, I swear to yeah. you. Oh, it's come terrible down the back. Oh, I can't believe it. Hello? Oh, way back the winner. Oh, I can't believe it. Can you? When you're out for, what have we said Saturday night? We've said no more horses. We said, I swear on my life. Oh, God, I can't believe it. I don't know how this day, but I started off winning in early age. The last year of school, always had money and had a few quid. This must have been the most incredibly lucky my person. And then, of course, when I left school, it all went out of wrong, and I became a compulsive gambler and horrible stories. What's the difference? What do you call a compulsive gambler? Well, the word compulsive, there were many arguments over it, the word compulsive, there's no limit. A compulsion and a compulsive gambler, which is a bad form of well, it's just evil. How long do you want me to go? Selling my brother's record, selling my brother's record collection, selling my mother's 
jewelry. I mean, I remember being at West Rice at Tuesdays and lost my dad's money. That I, you say steal, but you do steal it, but you don't mean to steal it. It's sort of this plan. I don't want to make myself something righteous, but I remember being at West Rice at Tuesdays with a tube train running at me eight mile an hour. And genuinely, I mean, I never talk about him. It's all you get, you know, not talk about that. But I really never give a fuck. My, my, my self respect was, I was nothing. How's he feel when you pull right? I don't normally get that in the pictures, do we? People feel with us, do we? See that one? See that one? See that one? No, that's what I wanted to say to see. But look, would you like it? The woman, she's got a dog's body and a woman's head. You'd like to see that, wouldn't you? But you've got to be 12 years old because all people's heads get blown up and stuff like that. Otherwise, I'd take you to see it. A couple of weeks after she was born, I don't know what it was, it just it just changed him completely. I don't know whether he actually started to worry about not being able to carry on the way he was doing or whatever, but he lost a hell of a lot of money. And it got to the stage where um, I was actually having to ask my mum for money to um, buy Jade the milk that she needed, you know, and stuff like that. But, th but then again, I've always had faith in him. I know that he can do it. I know that he's good at what he does. And I know that he'll always be able to do it. He'll always be able to get money from somewhere because he's that type of person. Yeah, yeah. Can I say something? Don't pull it out, please, love me. You know, I met a Hungarian philosopher once. Very, very clever man. A genius of a man. I mean, a man, you sit and talk to him and he just blow your head off. And he, um, he made me do some drawings. Janos, you know, it's Hungarian chap. A really serious man, you know. He, he rebelled against society. He was a serious, serious man. And um, he made me do some drawings and uh, asked me some questions. And he said, you're a Dostoevsky character. You're a guy who, if he embraces anything or takes to anything, he will, he will just become a fanatic. He said, there will only be four or five things in your life, or two or three probably, that you will become passionate about. He said, now will be your life. The thing is, it's fucking oh, Chris, isn't it? I don't know how anyone lives here. I lived here for five years, never had 30 pence to my fucking name. It's the hardest dog track in the world. I bought a thousand, I bought a thousand pound off my mum. It's about money, mate. As he'll tell you about the dog. We saw it running an A9 race, graded here. We saw the dog, Mrs. Walsh had it, didn't she? I said, I never, it got, it hit the fir it, first air race as a puppy, it hit the air out at the first bend. I said, this is, a, it, it just took off. It, it was an absolute aeroplane. I bought a thousand pound. I never had a shilling. I had a thousand pound of dog at nine to two to win a, to win the graded race. Bottom graded race here. It's gone to the corner. Got touched. Gone down the back. Shown a little bit. Got done again. Got beaten. I nearly cried my eyes out. Six months later, we was at Yarmouth. I had a thousand pound on it to win the Yarmouth Derby. When the same dog won the Yarmouth Derby, didn't it? A year later, I get everything beat. Yeah? I get absolutely how he's lived here all his life. How he's got a shilling, I never know. Three car pass. Four decades. I like past the sixteen hundred before the Norfolk. Three rugs, three dogs going. Go on your own, Roger. Four seconds. 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 jealous or envious of other people is a big, big advantage, full stop, and no one in any form of life appreciates how important that is. I'd say Australians on an envy basis would be seven and Britons would be 99. 
It's a massive, massive weakness, especially down south in this country. So I play on it. I mug myself off. I get leery. I upset them. I get them, get the money. Oh, Cross it. He's rolling with his hands. Yeah, Oliver, any more? <laughs> 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 what? People don't know how to spend money. That's what it is. People don't know how to spend money. I went to Australia for three and a half weeks with Kay. I had £37,000 in cash. It's all the money I had in the world. And I went to Australia because I went to Kempton the day we left. We went Qantas flight, 10.30 Boxing Day night. When I was in Australia, I won £4,500 gambling, right? I won nearly $7,000. £4,500 it was sterling. So effectively, I had 41 grand. And when I come back in England, I had less than a monkey in three weeks. So I spent that in three weeks. Now, people might think to themselves, how can you do that? How can you live with yourself with six months or later? But I think the opposite. When a year later, I'm skin, and I think, I'm skin, I'm a, I, I've got nothing. I think to myself, well, you ain't got nothing, Harry, because remember what you've done with that money? You've spent it, mate. They can't get it back. The bookies can't get it back. Once you hire out your own helicopter off network 10 and fly all over South Australia, going to dog tracks and living like a king and staying in fucking suites all over, you can't, they can't get that back. The bookies can't say, I want that money back, can they, when you spend it? They can't do it. And that's the philosophy I've got. Now, if I'd have put that money, say I'd have put that 37 grand aside for a rainy day, what happens when it rains? Then it rains the next day. I mean, have you ever heard such a load of shit in all your life? No way could I ever become a part of normal life and what people have to do and no. the, the things I have to stand for now. I just couldn't do it. So do you think this kind of life actually brings... It's the best out of you. Yeah. You get a certain... Without any doubt at all. When I first met Glenn three years ago, he had a tear up because a cup of tea went up five pence. And then two years later, he was lending me 40,000 out of 60. And we help each other around life other ways as well. Because invariably, if you can talk to your good mates, you, you, you laugh and joke about things that really are a fucking nightmare. You know, and you think, how does that happen? You laugh and joke about it. Good food, good wine. You know, you, you get away from it a bit. Here is the final score. Valdolid, did I say that right? Valdolid, is that right? Valdolid, Trez. No, Trez it says here. Valdolid, Trez, Barca, Uno. What is that right, Sherry? That is 3-1 to Valdolid. And the other game, because Real Madrid are 2-0 down at half time and they are shit and Barca are in the league, is Real Madrid, is that right? Madrid, like that? Quattro, which is the same number, which is the same number that Trap 4 won tonight at that rate that you bet. Four and Sevilla, which is where they're very good at making oranges from the way. And it's a nice train journey to Jerez, I believe. Is Real Madrid four, Sevilla two? Lovely jubbly. What a great night. Fucking beautiful. This will be about 80 quid each. Or you can play your corner and get the 80 quid X's off the BBC or whatever it is. Do whatever you want. We'll do your bollocks just so we had a lot of dinner that night. Yeah, we'll get out. We'll play in. You play the one, play your share. So no, I don't want to play. Play, that's it, play. Everything. Did you lose your bullet? Yeah. I want to be hit. Five. 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 He's had all his, he's been filming me going mad and now he knows what it's like. Look at him. Oh, he's getting me. Don't let me get him. Now he knows what it's like.